Howdy folks, Rudros here, and before Chicago kicks off, make sure you heavily consider what deck you're taking. Are you going to be running Emerald Steel Discard? We'll get to that one in a future video. Maybe you're running Blue and Gray Featured Item Deck. Maybe you're running Ruby Amethyst, or maybe you're doing what's pretty much the best late game deck in the game, which is Red, Blue, Sapphire, and Ruby. So this is a version of it I'm putting out there. There's so many different ways you can tech this and kind of modify it to your heart's content. This is just kind of a version that I've been tinkering with. Uh, big thanks to my buddy Dalton. He helped me get some of the match footage for this as well as really helped craft this deck. So a very big shout out to him for that. So one thing right out of the gate. I do think this is the best deck in the game if the game goes late enough. If it goes, the, the later it goes, this is the best deck you can have. Why? Because it has the best removal. Ruby's removal of straight banishing things is much stronger than Steel's removal. You know, Steel is all damage based, so Steel struggles with cards that have big bodies like Tamatoa. Uh, Maleficent Dragon, not so much because it can die to a Zeus for some reason, but nonetheless, if it has to constantly ping you over and over again versus Ruby just says, hey, remove anything hey remove all these things hey remove all these things remove it remove it so ruby has the best removal however this deck does take some time to ramp up and it needs to ramp up and the biggest downside of this and particularly this version is the uninkable count 24 uninkables which is a lot sometimes it makes it feel like it's unplayable and yes you are going to risk bricking and it's a risk you're just going to have to take if you want the strongest late game deck that currently exists in Lorcana. Now, it's also gonna struggle with early aggression, which is why we have a card like the Queen in here, because sometimes you just have to be able to answer early characters that are sitting there questing for lore. Because once you get late enough, you're golden. You have all the removal in the game, all your removal is insanely strong. You have very deep card draw between develop your brains, uh, the popsicle flavorsham engine is huge, as well as all these other items you have. And then you've got Lucky Dime to help really catch up on lore. So it's very common in this deck that you won't really get a lot of lore early. But Lucky Dime is going to just shoot you from 0 to 15 or 2 to 17. Just really shoot you far ahead once you get out to your Tamatoa, your Maleficent. Even Sisu quests for 3 so she can give quite a bit. The other thing about Red Blue in general is it's insanely reliant on Flaversham and items for your card draw. So if you're seeing your items but not your Flaversham, you're going to struggle a bit. If you're seeing <laughs> items but no Flaversham to break them and keep your hand healthy, you're going to struggle a bit. So just be aware of all that, you know, going in. I think there are more consistent decks, but I think the top end of this one is so appealing that it does make it worth the risk. Queen to take on early uh, threats. Sisu can also immediately get rid of early threats. I wanted to talk about both Sisus. As you can see in this version, we're only running one of each. I've seen versions that run way more, but our uninkable count is so high already. We're favoring other uninkables. You could tech more into these if you wanted to. What makes the Sisu and the Medusa so strong in this deck is this card, the Ice Block. We are running a full four of them. It reduces a character's attack power by one. And that works brilliantly with a Sisu. Normally, this only hits something with one attack power. Well, if you have two ice blocks on the field, suddenly you can take a three strength card like a Madame Mim Snake to one, and now this Sisu can kill it. Or you can set everything up for this Sisu to wipe it. In an original version, I did only try two of these ice blocks because it seems like a, a lot, right? Four to brick. But one, when you're not seeing popsicles, it's another item Flavorsham can break. Two, I found it too. I just wasn't seeing them enough to use their benefits with Medusa with with the Sisu. So I actually, even though it's very uninkable heavy, I think four and three minimum is the right number because Flaversham can use them for item for card draw and they are they do turn on your removal very heavily. So that's one of your big removal combos. Tala is just another way to keep digging deeper and deeper into your deck. She's develop your brain but on a body, which is nice. Flaversham is the backbone of the deck. If you're not seeing him in your items, you're not drawing, you're probably going to fail. Maui is our beater. He's our best way to take out locations since he just hits so hard and he has rush. Dragon can also hit decently hard, but usually you want to play dragon and make sure it banishes something. Medusa is stronger than ever in here thanks to Ice Block. I think in Ruby Amethyst, Tremaine still absolutely has a place because you don't have Ice Block to have Medusa manipulate cards. But in here, with the Ice Blocks, you can manipulate so suddenly she can take out cards that she shouldn't be able to. But Ice Block lets her do it. 
Sisu, the three lore is really nice, especially with Lucky Dime. If they have the right board state, she can be a one-sided board wipe, which is insanely strong. However, there are games when, uh, particularly in the mirror, it's difficult. You, you probably aren't going to have enough ice blocks to make everything vulnerable to a big Sisu. So I do think she gets a lot weaker in the mirror or in other matches that have very strong attackers. Damato is, of course, our big late game engine. Any of our items that get discarded early or end up getting broken with Flaversham, he's just going to get them back, and he turns on Dime to get insane lore. And Dragon is just our highest end removal piece that also quests for two and can take out a Queen's Castle in one shot. Develop your brain, early draw, brawl, another way to deal with opposing characters. And again, Ice Block works with this as well. Very strong here. One jump, we have to ramp. One jump's kind of funny because you really only want to see it on turn two. After that, it kind of becomes a dead card. Uh, that's when it's its most useful turn two. B King Undisputed is... I've gone back and forth on this myself. It's Tremaine's effect, but without the body. But it can be sung, and that is huge. So getting to play your Madame Medusa one turn and then turn her sideways and get this removal for free is huge. Same with you can have Flavors from singing as well. So the fact that it's a song is very powerful how far i'll go another song that just helps you dig deeper and ramp up as well and be prepared you still are going to need this card there is a lot of stuff that has ward running around so a bucky or the aerial that you saw in my last video that can't be targeted by the medusa or any of that stuff so if you're running into those ward cards you still are going to need be prepared to just wipe out those boards so Still an excellent, excellent card. Whenever Ice Block Popsicle is just there for drawing for Flaversham. Quill, your other primary way of ramping up, and it lets you use all those uninkables and put them into your inkwell anyway, which is fantastic. And then Dime is our closer. So are you willing to take the risk? It is a heck of a reward waiting for you. Let's see how it does. Game one, we are taking on a Ruby Amethyst. Unfortunately, Amethyst didn't get a whole lot this set, so it's not as strong as it used to be, but I still like the deck a lot. And it can go quite fast, especially if they're teching into the new Flynn Rider, really leaning heavily on him. And again, this deck doesn't have a lot of early answers, so it can make a huge deal. Here, we've got Ice Block, Popsicle, one jump ahead. Pretty decent hand. Again, a little heavy on the uninkables, but that, that's going to happen. Again, that's just something you're going to have to kind of be okay with. And you're probably going to draw into more just like the Sisu. So, of course, we go Popsicle turn one, try to see what we can. Ideally, setting up for one jump on the next turn can be a little obnoxious to deal with if you're going against Discard. Luckily, Ruby Amethyst doesn't have anything like this. And as long as they're not putting out the Flynn, they're not putting on a whole bunch of early lore pressure. And if we get later, we can just win this deck in the late game. They have to essentially race you down. There's the Flynn. Okay, so now Flynn is a little tricky, right? We don't have anything we can put out that is going to uh, outpower his attack, especially this early, but that's okay. You're going to have to ramp. That's just something you're going to have to take on. Use Flavisham. Now, here's the tricky part. One jump is good for that one turn, but if you don't have Fishbone Quill, you can't continue your ramp, which is how you get ahead. And you can see how fast this Ruby Amethyst deck can go when they've got a Flynn Rider on board. And that Sisu's going to make sure it's top-notch anyway. Now, we do have the Maui. So, if we want... We also have Brawl. Brawl is really good against Flynn. Brawl doesn't even require the Ice Block, which is nice. As you can see, we'll go in. If you plan to break your Ice Block with Flaversham, just make sure you always use it. It's really easy to forget it. And the reason we hit the Flynn there is just in case we were to draw a Sisu, a baby Sisu off of this. Sisu can come down and take out the Flynn. She doesn't, so you have to spend the Brawl, but that's okay. Now, look at all the uninkables in our hand. Literally, our hand is zero ink. You know, this is going to happen. This is going to happen in this list. I have toyed with versions that run less ink, and I think they're fine, but there's just so many good cards you're trying to run. You could cut out some of the removal. You could cut out things like the Bee King Undisputed, because, again, it's uninkable. However, I found that it, the, the riskier you are, the bigger the reward, because we're running so many uninkable cards. It also means we just have an insane top game, which is really nice. So they go ahead and sing King Undisputed. Unfortunately, we have to ink the Popsicle there, which does not feel good, because we have to get the Bee Prepared off. You technically could have waited, but they're already on 12. They were threatening to go to 15. I just don't think that's something you want to deal with. Now, luckily, they haven't seen much of their card draw. I have to ink the fishbone quill here. But here's your example. You can ice block the snake, drop the big sisu. Okay, now I've got a big 5-4, three quester on board, and I just took out your entire field. Here comes Flaversham. Right on time. It's going to help keep our draw going. 
And now we're starting to get to that stabilization point. And especially once you get Tamatoa going, you're recycling your items. So you're look how quickly this turned. We're already starting to look a lot better. There, Medusa can hit our Flavisham, so it does cut off our card draw. But we can counter with uh, Tamatoa. We can do the Dragon. Kind of our choice. Got a lot of options here. Can also Ice Block and counter Medusa if we want. And Medusa isn't a, a high lore quester, but it is a body, and because she hits for four, she can kill the Sisu. Sisu doesn't have an amazing body on her, so... So we go for a little more spot removal. Our opponent still doesn't have anything, yeah. We've got the draw now, and they don't, so... Here comes Popsicle. I'm gonna start keeping our hand fresh, and now this Tamatoa is saying, Well, it's about time for me to end the game, so... There's Be Prepared as expected. Luckily, we top deck Mr. Flaversham. And we just have removal for days. We have so much removal in our hands. Not a lot of questing power. Obviously, we can put the dragon out, which we'll put out. Ah, the Queen's Castle. Good choice. So, yeah, think here. Hmm. What do you do? You could put out a dragon without burning anything, and then the dragon can one-shot the castle. We can put out Tamatoa. Try to race. Always usually want to dig with Flaversham first just to see what you get. Popsicle's good. Not a whole lot after that. Aren't going to have a big Sisu to shift into. Yeah, so we'll put the Queen out as well as Medusa. So as long as they don't have Be Prepared, now they're getting into their card draw. But look at the hand size difference. Once the Flaversham goes off, you're, you're in a good spot. Rabbit, or the sorry, the Fox does take out the Queen. So we can still take out the Castle if we go with the Flaversham card draw, which we have plenty of draw at this point anyway. Probably a decent time for a dragon to come down. Yeah. And we actually opt to hit the Chernobogs just to keep them off cards in hand. You know, if this fox wants to... The only thing it can trade with is a Medusa. It would just put damage on Flaversham. But we want to keep them off as much card draw as possible. They have another fox. Still can only trade with Medusa. Which they opt not to. They realize too, oh, I need to start questing for lore quite a bit. So now we have so many options. Flaversham can draw us deeper. Dragon can just quest, or we can deal direct damage. It's kind of the nice thing about that ice block. Now this Medusa can hit it. We can wipe their board. We can use another dragon. We can use the Bee King Undisputed. We really have a lot of choices here. <laughs> so many choices. <laughs> be careful going against a deck with Whole New World, of course. You have to be a little mindful of your hand getting sculpted out, but... How far I'll go, let's just dig even just a little bit deeper. I mean, look, at we have three Maleficent Dragons. <laughs> We've got, yeah, so this is this is what I mean about the late top end. At this, Unless they put down something with Ward, which then that's what we have to be prepared for. We have so much. Okay, so now that the way is clear from the be prepared, here comes Tamatoa, who's just going to threaten to win the game by himself. You could jam out the Queen if you just want a body. Honestly, you're okay to just pass at this point. Tamatoa will win this game by himself. They do their own King Undisputed. But hey, we've got Tamatoa Part 2, so that's okay. And it just shows you Ruby Amethyst, no slouch. It's keeping up with us, but we c anything they put down, and there you know there's no ward in these colors, we can remove. Which is insane. There's a nice block. Now little Sisu can take care of it, which means we put another Quester on the board. And they're getting into their card draw. They have another Be Prepared. Unlikely. I mean, they can get rid of little Sisu. That's nice. That Again, she's not messing with the crab. Nor is Flynn going to do anything about the crab. Get a little more card draw with the next popsicle. We're looking for a dime. Cannot find dime to save our lives this game. And obviously that would just end it, but nonetheless. See, and here's, here's kind of the downside about Flynn uh, later in the game. Early, he's incredible, but like we, you don't even have to deal with him. You just have to have a bigger body than he does. Yep, and our opponent concedes. Next, we are taking on Discard. We do have one jump. One jump is always a little risky to keep against a green deck, especially if you are going second, which we are, because if they drop down an Ursula, they'll just snatch it out of your hand, and it really kills your curve and your ramp up. However, we did draw a second one. So now, <laughs> that's actually quite a bit better, because if they were to drop the Ursula, it's like, well, you can take one, but you're not taking both from me. Let's see if they do it. It's usually the smart play. 
We do have a lot on equal. Well, they inked Inner Celeste. They're probably playing one. Or unless they went Bucky. Yep. So, yeah, you can take one of them. <laughs> Two one jumps protects you from that. Uh, three does not. Unfortunately, you have to give up the Tala. See, I would really almost rather give up the Brawl, but you almost have to save the Brawl for Diablo. Because if Diablo comes out, you do not want them to start ramping up cards in hand. And at this point, no items for Flavisham either. So we're going to go into the Tamatoa just for the ink. Again, you could get one jump there, which does ramp you farther. But what happens? What if they play Ursula again? Now you've just lost it. So you got a couple options here. We definitely want to get rid of the Diablo. We can take out the Flynn. You're happy to discard the dime early. Tamatoa can always get it back later. Speaking of Tamatoa, unfortunately, we have to ink him. Now we're kind of in a rough spot, right? This is, this is even though they haven't been actively discarding us, we just discarded off the Flynn. But now we don't have Flaversham's items to get us back in the game. So we're kind of just holding on here for the moment. We're just going to go ahead and use the Be Prepared, cut them off their own card draw, Prince John. And now you're kind of at a hope and a prayer standpoint. You could you could make an argument that you hold the Maui in hand just to, what's it called, try to draw into an item for the Flaversham, but you also want to be on high ink because you want to be able to play your Tamatoa when it comes down. You want to be able to just play the Dragon or the CC when it comes down. So if you're a little too careful... It's not going to work. You have to be just kind of mindful how you do these matches. So, unfortunately, Tamatoa doesn't have anything to grab. There we go. Uh, actual Popsicle. But, yeah, but he's he's not as potent right here just because of the, uh, the Lucky Dime. And, yeah, there was a consideration here. The thing was we had to ink a lot of Tamatoas earlier. The reason I didn't just snap grab the Popsicle. So, there's a part of me that's like, man, if we lose this Tamatoa, we just might be out of him. Like, maybe we need to... To, and we go ahead and leave him up just in case he can combine Tinkerbell with some other removal. So we're trying to prevent that from happening. Storm Rage on. Oh gosh, do they have a Zeus? Yep, they got Zeus. That crab was uh, not long for this world. But again, here's a different... I talked about the removal earlier, right? They had to spend two cards for that. They had to spend a Zeus and a Storm Rage on. And I had to already have damage on him. So, from the Tinkerbell. So, if you count the Tinkerbell ping as well, that's three different forms of removal. Finally, we get an item, which Flaversham can help us with. We can also... Yeah, at this point, we're actually feeling a bit ahead, even though we're behind on lore, so we don't feel like we need to be prepared. That nasty Benja comes down and just snaps that away. But now, look at their board. Yeah, they've got a... Uh, what's it called? Ursula, which... bye bye CC just cleans up that entire board. And now we're just in complete control. They have no cards in hand. Yeah, they concede. Finally, we are on to Blue Steel, which is a very difficult matchup. Uh, Sapphire Steel can go a bit faster than we can. I, I think our deck has the higher late game that, again, in the end, our removal is better. But this deck can go very quickly, and especially with cards like that new Ariel, Cogsworth. Yes, they can both be cleaned up by Be Prepared, but that's kind of one of the only things that can clean them up. Also, it is one of the reasons we are running the Bee King Undisputed, because without Tremaine, it's one of the only other ways we can answer those ward characters. Now, they have to be alone, of course, but at least it's something. Otherwise, it's Be Prepared or Bust, and that's never going to feel good. Now, the nice thing is... You, you don't have to worry about, like, early aggression in this deck because they want to ramp up just like you do. As you can see right here, they go all the way to 5 ink. And we're in the same boat. Yeah, kind of weird here. Like, it always hurts to ink a Popsicle, but it was either ink that or Flavisham. You can't ink Flavisham, especially when you have items that they're going to keep your card draw up. So, unfortunately, have to use the ink the Popsicle, which never feels good. But, again, that's just something you have to be... You're going to have to get comfortable with if you're running a blue-red deck. Even if I've tried to make versions with less uninkables, and they're fine. They're solid, and they, they function, but each one you cut, you can definitely feel it. Of like, oh, I am only have two ice blocks. Oh, I don't see him as frequently as I should do. Oh, I don't have B-King Undisputed. Well, now I, don't, I can't deal with these ward characters. So it's a very, very risk versus reward game. So Flaversham, snap off the ice block, immediately use it. We could, we don't have enough to drop Medusa this turn. We can drop the Popsicle. Queen doesn't do a whole lot here. Their bodies are going to be too big for Queen to deal with. Big Sisu really wouldn't be terrible at this point. Not that we have the ink for it yet, but. So I'll have to go in for the how far I'll go. 
How Far I'll Go is it's one of those songs that, again, part of me always wants to cut it just because it's uninkable, but it's so good. It does what you want it to do, right? It ramps up your deck and draws you a card. That's exactly what this deck wants. <laughs> and it can be sung just to shame it's uninkable. And here's a big old Chen Po, but right on time, we draw a little be prepared. So it's like, oh, all right, well, I'll just go ahead and uh, answer this slickety split. Now, one thing you have to be a little mindful of against the gray decks is whole new world. Whole new world is at its best for your opponent when your hand is full because it's so many cards you didn't get to use. So you have to kind of play this game of like, well, you, you want to go low enough so it's not in completely advantageous for them to use it, but you also <laughs> don't want to go so low that they don't run it. Some of these decks have cut it. Uh, I still think it's very good, uh, especially the way it can disrupt your opponent's hand. So against those decks, be this beast is really nice too, is you can take out your items. You know, you don't want to go solo expecting them to be prepared and then they don't. So here's a really good example of how the King Undisputed is good, although we don't even need it with the Ice Block. Look at that. Tremaine, norm or not Tremaine, Medusa normally cannot touch that beast, but Ice Block says, actually, yes, she can. And then this one just cuts off the SME. So this is the power of this red-blue removal. There's the whole new world. But we got down to three in hand first, so it doesn't hurt quite as bad. Kind of sucks we lost the Flavorsham. But again, you, you got to be careful how much you draw against these decks anyway. Because if you are drawing constantly with Flavorsham and then they use whole new world on your hand, you could deck out. You could very much deck out against this matchup. So just be mindful of that. We do get another Flavorsham. Let me go ahead and dig a little deeper. Looks like we're going to favor our spot removal. We can just sing this, which is nice. Has to get rid of the Smee. Uh, we do have Diamond Hand, too, which is nice. Tala is going to dig us a little deeper as well. More spot removal. The one jump isn't bad here. We do a quick deck check. Kind of went a little too fast for me to check what the sizes are. Here's Tamatoa. See, now, the, the, the advantage of those blue-gray decks, they have the late-game power that you have as far as questing. They have the Dime. They have the Tamatoa. They have the Aerials, the Bells. So... But we have the removal. That Yeah, that Tamato is great, but unless you have the dime to immediately take advantage of his lure, we're just going to immediately remove it with the power of these dragons, which is insane. We opt not to break the item there because, yeah, at this point, we need to be a little mindful of deck out. We've got all the lore on board. There's that aerial. Double aerial. Okay. So <laughs> none of these cards can deal with that. We do draw Be Prepared off the top. And I think we're just going to fire it off because they technically have lethal. If they have a diamond hand, which is, I'm going to take a moment to really, if they have diamond hand, they just win the game because both aerials quest for five, which puts them on 15, they dime and then they just win. So I don't really want to be prepared because I have such a big board state. The other option is I can try to match them item wise because aerial only gets the bonus if they have more items than you. But the problem is I can't put down the dime and the quill. So if I match them for three, and they drop dime, dime automatically puts them to four. So I, I do take a big a big think on this turn because, yeah, what do you do? Do you, do you just pray they don't have it? No. The safe option is to be prepared. Well, if they don't have the dime, obviously you don't need to, but that is the quote-unquote safe option. And there's another whole new world. They didn't have the dime, so we didn't need to do that in hindsight. But it was the safe play to make is that you're cutting off your opponent's win condition and you're trying to further your own. And you can see this be prepared coming in handy. Like this card's just still too strong not to cut or to cut it. Tinkerbell can be entered with a Maui. We can get our own dime on board. This isn't like an amazing hand. We don't really have any big lore threats, but spot removal is very good. Look at that. Medu Medusa shouldn't be able to take out a Tinkerbell. I, I have to admit, just from a personal standpoint, I don't really like what Ice Block gives to this deck because I, I, I like the design of a card like Medusa that, okay, she has very specific things she hits. Same with Tremaine. She is best on a small board. But when they have a ton of characters, she doesn't... Like, I like that. I like that balance. I like that push and pull. I like that, hey, it's good here, but not so good here. I don't like <laughs> that the ice block just says, yeah, all that doesn't matter. I can now just hit things I shouldn't be able to hit. Nonetheless, our opponent goes wide. They're on 16 ink. Obviously, this is an easy be prepared board if we want to, uh, as the Tinkerbell and the Smee are putting on two lore pressure each. So it's six total, plus the Flavorsham can get them the items. I'm assuming I go in on the be prepared here. Question is, do we draw a Flavorsham? No, we're actually going to sing. 
how far I'll go, get a little more in our inkwell, get just a little more card draw, see if we can't get a good follow-up to that. The Maui, drop the Be Prepared, and keep that lore low. And against a deck like this, you kind of have to keep that door low. Uh, uh, door. Lore low. Again, if those aerials had lived even one turn, boom, they just win out of nowhere. I had that happen in my locals this week, where I was so far ahead of an opponent with Rumi Amethyst, and they were on this blue-gray, and just out of nowhere... Lucky Dime, Bell, and it just, boom, to 20 from, like, 0 or 5 out of nowhere. You're like, oh, okay, whoops, well, I just lose the game. We finally get our Dime out. Now we can start developing our own stuff. We can put out the Tala, the Tala if we want to dig a little more. And we don't have quite enough ice blocks to get rid of the Simba. And, yeah, we're, we're just trying to do some calculations on our head. Hey, <laughs> there's Tamatoa. Tamatoa is now going to be our, our victory condition. We've gone through most of our deck at this point. But Tamatoa coming down next turn should basically just win the game. Right now, he would be a five. So as long as we they don't get rid of this Tala, we can just... So they drop their own Tamatoa with the Dime, with Fortisphere. This dude has eight lore. Holy moly. And this is what I mean. They were on five. They're on 13. Now they're about to be on 15. They're on lethal. They were on five lore. Now they're on lethal. These decks go kind of just so insanely fast these days. Luckily... We have our own Tamatoa, and there's no interaction on your opponent's turn in this game, so we have just enough with the Tala quest. We're going to steal it right out from under their nose. So that's the Ruby Blues. Insane late game power, but a huge risk of bricking. As you can see, man, some of these decks can just pile on so much lore out of nowhere, so to have this much removal is that <laughs> kind of just feels necessary. Nice little Moody Blues reference with the title. Let me know what you think. I appreciate you watching. Feel free to leave a comment below. Good luck if you're going to Chicago. I would love to see a red-blue deck take it and beat out that little squirrel, even though this deck, I think, also has its own broken mechanics in it, but that's a video for another time. Appreciate you watching, and until next time, take care.